All right, welcome everyone. My name is Trisha Ingram, and I want to welcome all of you to a very special edition of Artists at Google. Today is Take Your Children to Work Day, and we are so lucky to have over 100 Googler kids in our audience. Are you here, kids? Yeah. <laughs> all right, excellent. <laughs> As the late, great children's book author, Roald Dahl said, those who don't believe in magic will never see it. Well, in 2011, nine-year-old Kane Monroy spent his summer vacation building an elaborate DIY cardboard arcade inside his dad's used auto parts store and invited people to play. The entire summer went by and Kane had yet to have a single customer. Until one day, a filmmaker named Nirvan stopped by to buy a door handle. What happened next inspired Nirvan's short film. My name's Kane, I'm nine years old. My arcade is called Kane's Arcade. It's open on weekends only, and it's really cheap. Kane does not pass by on K without stopping in. He loves tickets, playing games, he loves prizes. So it was only natural for him to build his own arcade. So who here believes in magic? Can I see some hands? That's what I thought. So Nirvan posted this film on the internet on April 9th, 2012, and five days later, the movie went viral with now over 8 million views and screenings around the world on television and at festivals, it has launched a movement. Here to talk about this incredible journey is Nirvan Molik and Kane Monroy. Please join me in giving a warm Google welcome. Hello. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm Nirvan. Kane Monroy. <laughs> And um, you know, this video came out about a little over a year ago. Um, as Teresa said, it was um, April 9th. And I, I just want to share a little bit of the impact that the, the film's had, both on, on my life and uh, Kane's life. And then we'll do a little Q&A. Sound cool? So if you guys have questions, think about them, and then ask us at the end. Um, so literally, the film, uh, the day I posted the film, it, it just went viral. and. Um, at the end of the film, there was that little um, website, canesarcade.com, and it said donate to Kane's scholarship fund. And the goal was to raise a $25,000 scholarship fund for Kane. And uh, Kane's dad, who's, who's in the back uh, somewhere, he's like, yeah, you know, maybe. Good luck. There's George. Um, so the first day we posted the film, it got over a million views, and it raised over $60,000 on day one. <laughs> So, well, that was the, the thought, you know, uh, we raised the goal actually to $100,000 thinking by the time Kane's ready for, for college, you know, this might even cover a semester because tuition's going up so fast. So we raised the goal to $100,000 and the next day it raised over $110,000. At that point we are like, do we raise the goal again? And, and George is like, yes, raise it to a million bucks, please. Uh, we said, no, wait, we don't, we don't really know what's going on here. We need to kind of figure out what's happening, have a plan before we invite the global community that's helped us reach this goal uh, without having a, a plan. Because the first two days, I mean, we were getting phone calls, and the media was calling us, and I, I didn't sleep for the first two days. Uh, it was, we were going, doing all those talk shows, remember? Yes, Paris. We went to, well, not in the first two days we didn't go to Paris, but we did end up going to Paris. Um, so there's this huge global interest, and uh, by the end of the fifth day, uh, you know, we'd raised over $152,000 for Kane. Uh, we gave him this giant cardboard check uh, at his arcade. Uh, but it wasn't just the money that was being raised. There was uh, media around the world. Justin Timberlake was tweeting it out. It was trending on Twitter worldwide. Um, you know, it got over, uh, I don't know, 140 million media impressions in the first week. And the more magical thing was the response from kids around the world. Kids and educators saw the film, and they just started making things. So this is a little clip from a follow-up film I made showing 
a little bit of the global response from, from kids and, and people around the world to Cane's Arcade. Finally tonight, we have a great story out of Los Angeles, East L.A. to be precise. When you're a lonely nine-year-old boy, an empty cardboard box can be a universe of possibility. I found this great story. I want to share it with you. They're lining up to play at his cardboard arcade. This kid made his own arcade. And the internet has been flooded with response videos. Yeah, I'll get 10 tries. Jojo Roman, and I make this simple machine. It's called Tilt-A-Ball. Nice! Awesome. Where's my hair? I'm just getting a circle, okay? Okay. Is it inside of the flashlight and you draw whatever it is that you put on the top? So there was this beautiful response uh, from kids around the world. Something magical was really happening. And you know, after two days of not sleeping, I, I had this idea of trying to start a foundation and, and have an impact on, on more kids like Kane who just needed a high five and their creativity to be fostered. You going for the mic? <laughs> <laughs> what? You're four? Wow. I'm 38. <laughs> Um, so, I stayed up for two days, and then I wrote this mission statement on a napkin to find, foster, and fund creativity and entrepreneurship in more kids like Kane, because it was just clear there were so many kids like Kane out there, and parents were posting pictures of their kids on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page, saying, you know, my daughter's four, and she saw the movie, and she just built an arcade in our kitchen, she's got her own shirt, how do we get some customers into the kitchen? So, the idea was to try to help make a foundation that would help foster creativity in kids everywhere. So I had a conversation with the Goldhurst Foundation, Ben Goldhurst, they started Good Magazine, really great folks, and I've known them for 12 years, and, and he said to me, you guys are starting at the destination. There's so many organizations trying to figure out how to scale things like project-based learning. Uh, you know, what can we do to support you? So at that point, they offered us a quarter million dollar grant to start up the Imagination Foundation. And the quarter million dollar grant started matching dollar for dollar, the donations being made by the public to Kane Scholarship Fund, so every dollar given by the public to Kane Scholarship Fund, the Goldhurst Foundation gave us a dollar to start up the Imagination Foundation. At that point, we raised the goal on the website from the $100,000 to $250,000. And this is a little bit of what we accomplished in the first five months uh, from the film being posted. So the Imagination Foundation's mission is to find, foster, and fund creativity and entrepreneurship in kids like Kane. After we started the foundation, the first thing we did is we hit the ground running with a school pilot program. Within the first two months, over 100 schools in nine countries participated using project-based learning to teach kids math, science, and engineering. One of the greatest challenges I think we face in education is tapping into children's natural powers of creativity. And one of the appeals of Kane's Arcade is it's demonstrating how deep those powers are and how readily people will rise to the challenge if you give it to them. So we decided to give this world a global cardboard challenge, and we invited people around the world to build anything awesome out of cardboard recycled materials in their imagination. And three weeks after posting this challenge, we had over 271 events organized in 41 countries around the world. I told Kane that when I was a kid, I also built cardboard rockets. These were space capsules that we could actually fly in our backyard. And here I am, many years later, and I'm still building a spacecraft. But this one, a real one, that landed on Mars. Childhood imagination will take you from cardboard to this in just a few years. Challenge culminated in a global day of play, which last year happened on October 6th, which was the one year anniversary of the flash mob we did for Kane. And this year it'll be happening again on October 5th. So every year on the anniversary of the flash mob, we invite the world to come out and play uh, and celebrate the creativity of kids in their community. So this year, the goal with the Imagination Foundation is to engage 1 million kids in 70 countries in creative play. Uh, and, and we've been growing a lot very quickly, so we'll invite you all to find out more and maybe participate in the Cardboard Challenge in your communities. Uh, and then, you know, I just wanted to share a little bit about how this has impacted Kane, right? Do you remember that day, the flash mob, before yes. the film went all viral? Yes. What did you, do you remember what you said to your dad when you guys were driving home? 
that was the best day of my life. Yeah. So George told me that the next day, and it kind of made me tear up. And, and, and the impact it had, I mean, we've raised over $232,000 now for Kane Scholarship Fund. This is a photo from the Saturday after the film went viral. We didn't invite people this time to a flash mob, but over 1,000 people just showed up spontaneously to play uh, Kane's arcade. And we had, like, there was a line around the block. There was like four or five hour wait. And Kane actually started uh, selling a, a $20 fast fun pass where you can skip the line. <laughs> uh, Kane was the youngest ever entrepreneur to speak at the USC Marshall School of Business. Um, we're, CNN came out and filmed you there? Yes. Then we went, yes. Uh, Kane went up to Sacramento and he was given the Latino Spirit Award at the California State Assembly. And he wore his sneaks with his suit. Uh, we went to France, as Kane mentioned, and, and Kane was the youngest ever speaker at the Con Lion International Festival of Creativity, which we renamed uh, Kane's Lions for the day. <laughs> um, you know, he's just, uh, he was just out in New York where he spoke at a TEDx teen event hosted by Chelsea Clinton. Was that fun? Yes. That was your first time on stage by yourself? Yes. And uh, I love this picture. This is Kane backstage making games out of the pamphlets that they had. Uh, he did the same thing when we were in Paris. Um, and this is a photo from, uh, this was Kane's arcade for the day of play. Last year, right across the street, we had to expand for the day. We had over 800 folks come out and play. Kids brought their arcade games, made new arcade games. Uh, Kane made the mayor, uh, added the mayor to his staff. <laughs> and he got a cardboard key to the city, which was super fun. And, um, and he got a billboard, too, which was always one of his uh, things he asked his dad, like, can I get a billboard to start my arcade? And his dad was like, before, it's like, it's a little bit out of the budget. but. Uh, you know, people still come out to play Kane's Arcade from all over the world. Um, how many customers do you get when you open up? Around 50 through 100. Wow. And it's been a year and a half since the flash mob, a year since the film came out. Um, when we went to Paris together, Kane was like finding cardboard tubes in the alley, just nonstop playing. Um, and on the way back, on the flight back, I, was, I wanted to know, I was like curious, like, Kane, what? What have you learned from all of this? You know, what have you learned? Um, and so I asked him to write down a few things that he learned, but we didn't have any paper, so he wrote down these um, five lessons with the Air France barf bag. <laughs> so these are Kane's five lessons on a barf bag. Will you, will you read them out for us, Kane? Or I see. Yeah. This is what did Kane learn? Be nice to customers. Do a business that is fun. Do not give up. Start with what you have. Use of cycle stuff. Pretty awesome business. Personally, I love that he circled do not give up with a squiggly circle and underlined it three times. I think that's my motto as well. And this has become my, my business plan for the Imagination Foundation. Um, and I've learned a lot too from this, you know. Uh, it's been a life-changing year for both of us. Uh, the first thing I learned is, you know, it doesn't take much to change the life of a child. Sometimes just giving a kid a high five at just the right moment or stopping to play. Um, also, you know, next time you go buy a door handle, just <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Like the smallest moments can sometimes have the biggest impact. And finally, it was to always buy the fun pass. And uh, this is a fun moment. Um, so that that's our. our little slides and talks, and, and uh, we invite you all to play uh, through Kane's Arcade, the Imagination Foundation, and our next cardboard challenge. You guys can go and see ways to bring this to your community and help us reach uh, a million kids in 70 countries with creative play. Thanks. Oh, and if you have any questions. Yes? What did you spend your $20,000 on? That's for college. Oh, yeah. The question was, what has Kane spent his money on that he's made? But you've made a fair amount selling fun passes at your arcade and stuff, right? Yes. What do you, what do you spend all that on? Prizes. For the arcade, like investing back in the business? Yes. What, but not just in your business. Like, you've been able to buy a few things for fun, too, right? Yes. Like, what kind of stuff do you buy? Nerf guns. Nerf guns. <laughs> Kane also saved up for his first go-kart, his first car, so he bought a go-kart. And your dad says you buy a lot of Legos, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
So Legos, Nerf gun, and go kart. Yeah, you want to ask a question here on the mic? No, it's not a question. Oh. It's something that I have to do. Well, go ahead and say what. Tell us. Um, I might go to Kane's Arcade. That would be awesome. I hope I can. Yeah. yeah. Kane, you want to let people know when you're open and stuff? This Saturday I'm gonna be open. What are your hours? Um, let's see, nine to three. Nine to three. Kane, Kane sets his own schedule, and, and I, I post it on uh, the Facebook slash Kane's Arcade page, and we pin the hours on the top. He's not always there. I actually asked his dad recently, like, how does Kane set his hours? And he's like, Kane has a wallet now, and when his wallet is empty, that's when we open up the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also in school during the week and stuff, so we, we have irregular hours still. Who's, who had the next question? I saw somebody. You? Hi. What time do you open? Nine o'clock. Nine a.m. Sometimes ten a.m. George, do you want to come up too? Everybody, George Monroy, Kane's dad. Come on up, George. Come on. Come on. How'd you get the idea of making a cardboard arcade? I wanted to have my own arcade. What? I always wanted to own my own arcade. So I just built one out of cardboard. Cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, wh where's your store? Boyle Heights. Ow. Do you guys know where Boyle Heights is? <laughs> no. Well, you, you can actually Google Kane's Arcade and it'll come up. And you can see it on Google Earth. And you can go down to Street View and you can actually see a photo of Kane before the movie came out, and he's sitting there waiting for customers on, on, on the Google Earth, yeah. Do you like your arcade? Yes, very much. Good. Where'd you get all the cardboard? Well, my dad's auto parts shop that he gets from um, parts. How much money do you earn each day? Um, Don't tell him. <laughs> like $100. Do you plan to expand the arcade? Maybe. You've built, Kane's built a couple new games since then. My favorite, I actually made a little movie about, it's called Ticket Grab, where a neighbor was throwing out a refrigerator box. Can you tell them a little bit about Ticket Grab and how that one works? Oh, I guess our neighbor was getting a new refrigerator. So they threw the box outside, and I just got it to use it for a Ticket Grab. Yeah, but Ticket Grab was kind of elaborate, right? Like, you, yes. what did you buy to make Ticket Grab work? A leaf blower. Right. And tape. Yeah. Kane made a, a Ticket Grab out of this cardboard refrigerator box, and he's got a leaf blower that he bought. And he's got all these little prize tickets, and he puts them inside, and then you go inside the box, and he turns it on outside, and the tickets swirl around. And he made a, a clear little portal door that you can see inside, and he also made an emergency exit at the top where you have to pull, and you wrote these rules down, and the rules are like scream, yell, and have fun. And, um, and the emergency exit was after we'd gone to France from the safety description. So he's been incorporating a lot of his travels. Pretty cool. Kane, what do you want to study when you grow up? Engineer. Hi. Good answer for this crowd, Kane. <laughs> Could you tell me some tips of how to get the arcade? Believe in yourself. Don't stop. What's your favorite game that you made? The claw machine. It has a string and a hook, and test teddy bears inside and try to hook it and bring it to the hole. And Kane has started building these on commission, so you can talk to him and he can make you a. a, a he's made a couple cardboard claw machines. I bought one, and the Exploratorium in San Francisco bought the original. Claw machine they have it in their permanent collection. Um, what's your newest game that you've made? Made. I think it's a soccer one. Right. Well, he's no. made some games since then that aren't even in the movie. Oh. Yeah. Air hockey. Cool. Can I describe how air hockey game works? Air hockey works. It was like this really soft paper that I use. It's slippery. Then I just get a cardboard little, like, cardboard circle. Then I make two things, like, you hit it, and I made a hole. So it goes down, and you get it back, and 
Give him a play. There you go. Thank you. Can you translate that question at all? I'm scared. Oh, thank you for that. I love that question. It might be my it's favorite Kane's question. Arcade. Kane's Arcade. Who said thank you? Does anybody else have any questions? What do you want to do for a living after college? What do you want to do for a living after college? Mm. Well, own my own arcade. <laughs> Keep the arcade going. You, Kane's still figuring it out. Like you said, sometimes maybe a game designer. Yeah. Yeah. Who is your first customer? Nirvana. That's me. <laughs> Would you go there to buy play? I went there to buy a door handle for my 96 Corolla. My car had a broken door handle. Never been there before. And it was the only used auto parts store on the block that had a little swing hanging from a tree. So I stopped there. And then I met Kane. Yes. Did you? Did he have a door handle? Yes, I bought the door handle, and <laughs> and George later actually put it in for free for me. Cool. At least I could do. It's my magic. It's my magic door handle. How did you feel after a uh, flash mob? What? The flash mob? Yeah. Felt pretty cool. Like everybody came. Are you gonna make another one? Arcade. Maybe. How much does a ticket um, for Fun Pass? A Fun Pass and a Four Try game thing? Uh, the Fun Pass costs two dollars. Oh. Then the Four Try we don't have any more. Four turns, no. You How don't much have does it anymore. One turn. Does somebody give you a dollar? No. Nope. They can't play. How nobody, much? nobody has ever not bought the Fun Pass that I know of. It's a really good ups upsell. How much does one turn cost? One turn cost. You know, you have to get a fun pass. Oh. But then you get five hundred turns. Um. Could you buy fun pass right now? Yes. Can I buy one? Yes. Now, awesome. After. After this, and we also have um, some Kane's Arcade staff shirts. Uh, if you guys want to join Kane's staff. How old were you when you started the arcade? Um, like. Eight and of eight. Okay. Um, how long did it take for the flash mob to die out? Um, the sun went down. <laughs> Kane was working until what? Like how long, George? Until like eight o'clock at night. Yeah. Kane worked till eight o'clock at night, and then after all the customers left. Get? Hang on one sec. One how, many, oh. how many kids did you get? How many kids? The like customers? Yeah. How many customers did you get? Kid customers. Kid customers. Like 50? 50 that day? We have a guest book there that's full, and you can come when you come play, and you can leave a comment and draw a picture. But um, after the flash mob, I mean, Kane was there till 8 o'clock, the last customer, and then afterwards he was cleaning up the games, putting the toys away. I, I got that last interview with him that's playing during the credits, kind of after that it all died down, and got his first impression on what it was like. How long did it take you to build your arcade? Um, pretty much like one year. Because you guys see those, that, that box of, the pile of cardboard boxes over there? We're going to have a chance to build some games. So you were basically Kane's best friend, right? I was not Kane's best friend. I, I, we didn't know each other. And uh, Kane simply, you know, I went to buy the door handle. I never met him before. And he asked if I wanted to, to play, and I asked how it worked. And, and so I, I bought the Fun Pass. And I have my first Fun Pass with me. If any of you guys want to see it afterwards, I'll be over. But it's right here. I keep it with me. And every now and again, Kane's like, oh, you're out of turns. You've got to give me another two bucks <laughs> to keep charging it. One month. Yeah, it's, oh, it expires after a month. What? When is Kane going to grow up? Kane, when are you going to grow up? <laughs> Let's see. Ten more years? Ten more years. He'll be 20 years old. Kane wrote an essay about growing up when he turned 10, going to double digits, and we have it on the Kane's Arcade blog. It's really cute. What's double digits? Double digits, when he turned from nine, you know, one through nine is single, and then when he became 10, he's double digits. It's like, 
Well, he just wrote down his reflections on getting older. How do you get the shirts? I buy them. George, we tell the story when Kane went to make the, the shirt in Palm Springs and design it. Yeah, we were in, in the store for like two hours while he decided what color he wanted, what he wanted it to say. He wanted to put his address on it. And he spelled out staff because he didn't know how to say it and he didn't know what it meant. He just knew that if you had that on your shirt that you worked there. So he spelled it out for the lady and the lady put it on there. He goes, oh, you want staff? He goes, yeah, because I worked there. So then he wanted to put his address on the back and she goes, oh, no, no, you don't want to put your address on because then they'll know where you live. He goes, I want them to know where I live. <laughs> So we ended up not putting the address, but as you can see, this shirt is world famous now. And yeah. I think Nirvan sold over a million copies. I don't think we sold a million shirts, but um, we do sell shirts on the, uh, on the website too. So, uh, and, and the shirts, uh, Kane gets some money from the shirts and, and the foundation gets some money from the shirts too. So. Or you can go to his arcade and get, and get shirts there. He's got a couple of different designs. Why does it hit shirt say manager or something like we that? We actually did make a shirt for Kane that says boss. So he has a shirt mm -hmm. that says boss, but is, what, is it dirty or did you outgrow it or what's going on? Dirty. It's dirty. <laughs> His boss shirt's dirty. The boss keeps... Where does Kane want to go to college? Kane, the question is where do you want to go to college? I don't know yet. He doesn't know. He's gotten a couple offers. MIT wants him to go. USC wants him to go. UCLA wants him to go. Still has some time to figure it out. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us.